welcome to the Venture Podcast, where we dive deep into the world of entrepreneurship, innovation, strategic partnership. Today, we have very special guest, David Lerner Minson, popularly known as DLM, who is the founder of and CEO of First Founder. David, welcome to the show. And just let me know what is your experience and expertise and your education background. Thank you very much, um, Sadav, for inviting me to your wonderful podcast. I'm excited to be here. Um, again, my name is David Larry Messon, and um, people call me DLM. I'm a venture builder, but before I became a venture builder, I was a strategist and um, spent 12 years as a strategist. I'm still a strategist, but then I sort of um, delved fully into venture building, where following my experience with providing strategy and ideations for uh, over 250 businesses across Africa. And um, with that, um, I've now sort of streamlined into technology where I work with um, early stage founders to you know, build their startups from scratch for equity. And that sort of led to setting up um, First Founders Incorporated, which is a venture studio that partners with um, early stage founders to build their startups from scratch. And then, of course, we take equity for that. And um, what we basically do is to provide the initial financial backing that the uh, idea require, and also provide operational support over a period of three years. And also we provide strategic partnerships that enable faster growth for the startups as they were. And um, we have a very robust team that supports this you know, these startups and all of that. My background, basically, my first um, I, I studied mass communication first and then moved on to um, studying um, destructive strategy with Harvard Business School Online, then did um, another entrepreneurship and innovation course with Scalable International in Dubai, and then moved on to do some short courses in London Business School as well as Oxford University through the African um, Oxford African Arts Center, basically. So, um, and um, those are my background. But I'm an avid um reader. I love to discover new things. So I'll say that uh, over the last sixteen years of my professional career, I've I've spent more time trying to unravel the concept around innovation, disruption, and entrepreneurship in itself because I'm more particular about um, entrepreneurs at the bottom of the pyramid. And uh, that's simply because these are the people that are actually very close to the problems that exist. And since entrepreneurship is about problem solving, I'm able to identify these people that discover very painful problems that they are now trying to turn into solutions that can make global impact, but lack the resources to be able to translate these ideas or innovations into core products and uh, and that's simply because i want to be able to democratize entrepreneurship it's my my my, my, my vision my purpose is to democratize entrepreneurship hence why i'm sort of more interested in all of that so i bring the innovation the disruptions and all of that entrepreneurship capacity or skills that enable an average person to sort of take on that journey more successfully so thank you so much, David, for the whole, um, your journey education. Uh, now let's come to the second question. Now let's talk about the first founder. Please share with us the story behind the founding of first founders and what inspired you to create a venture studio. So um, um, since 2001, when I was, I discovered myself I know that uh, my purpose on earth is to solve problems for people and more particularly to enable them. I, I joined into entrepreneurship myself, trying to do business. I succeeded. I became a millionaire after six years of my business. I think I was 23 then. And then by the time I was 25, I lost all my money. And um, I was trying to figure out why I lost all my money. And then I realized that um, I was not, I was, I was entrepreneurially equipped, but not financially learned, and also mm. did not understand the um, psychology, emotional intelligence that comes with managing processes and managing operations of business. So it's a different thing for you to be very passionate about business or an idea, 
and then you 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 solve that problem you 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 unravel you launch that idea and it might for some luck you might be able to attain a virality with that idea that does not mean that the fact that your idea has gone viral in terms of growth that does not mean that you have the capacity to run the operations and understand the end to end processes of sustaining that business and moving through the various phases of growth for that business i lack that in those early stages and i because of that i got distracted got right into some small challenges and i thought that because of that challenge business is gonna die i delved into other things and before i know it all the money i had got lost and that mm. sort of you know sort of um revealed to me something very special about entrepreneurship that whether you like it or not you don't know it all in entrepreneurship you need some type of experiential support to be able to help your business grow through the ranks of development and more so for the fact that as an entrepreneur i believe that you need as an early stage entrepreneur you need some type of apprenticeship where you get to learn for experienced people who will work with you internally and externally to be able to help to consolidate upon the operations of that business and the sustainability so that gap in itself, having gone through that experience, I just thought that, come, you know what? There are several other people like me that dabble into entrepreneurial success in those early stages and at the same time, you know, deep dived and everything goes into team air. So first founder was vetted on that premise to help entrepreneurs who are just starting to, to grow, to go through the process of entrepreneurship despite their passion. So that with all of the experienced venture builders, the legals, the marketing guys, and all that, working with you to understand the core process, what to avoid and what not to avoid, all of what you need to do to be able to get the business growing from end to end, you know, it helps to help um, enable what I call operational efficiency, financial efficiency, and also helps you to manage what we call resource efficiency. You understand? So where you are supposed to spend $10,000, when an experienced person comes in, you will likely spend $3,000. You have saved 70% of that same capital that you that wasted you will because somebody with experience has sort of come into the picture. So venture, the very first founders as a venture studio is solving that problem and helping mm -hmm. entrepreneurs to go through the nitty gritty of entrepreneurship, but more importantly, helping them to grow to adopt a sustainable way to be able to run, you know, their business, to maintain efficiency across board and to also grow in a way that, um, you know, allow them, allow the business to remain more scalable and um, and generate more impact and um, revenue. Hmm. Same goes to, I need to add over here that, same like that what you are saying, we are providing the partial consultancy to startups. Because when they have the investment or they are going for the investment, they have no idea how much the operational cost they will have, what will be their cap capex, how much investment they would require, and what equity they can easily share with the investor and in what terms. So here we are helping out startups as well, like how to ma manage their cash properly, how to manage their equity properly, and what terms and conditions they should have with the investors. So and it's, it's really crucial because after six months and one year, they will say, okay, we are not it achieving the breaking point. Why not? What is the reason behind it? So we are doing the whole scrutinizing, the gap analyzing, smooth the whole process regarding the financials and accountability. So they have more power on the cash management. So they will have more profitability and cost effectiveness. So same like first monitors, we are helping the startups as well, um, David. And it's really very, I'm very pleased when the startup is having growth and profitability after our having the financial strategies, which is a very good point. Uh, now come to the next questions you have. Pre uh, it's very, very, very interesting thing, David, that you answered the all three questions, <laughs> which I need to ask. <laughs> Probably you already answered it. <laughs> so I need to jump over the next questions, which is number six. Throughout your career, what are the some important lessons you have learned about building successful venture? 
Well, one of the key lessons that I've learned in building a successful venture is that um, you have to first of all understand that um, business is about people. Mm. Mm. People, and when we talk about people, we're talking about customers, we're talking about the stakeholders, the regulators, we're talking about your investors, we're talking about your employees, we're talking about your co-founders and all that. And because it is all about people, you will see that there's the connecting rope within all of those moving needles mm. is for you to be able to provide value. You get what I'm saying? And uh, your inability to provide value on those end-to-end, -end, you know, um, segments within the ambit of the people that you are serving, mm. the business will begin to deep dive into its loss or whatever it takes. So if you don't serve your customers well, don't provide strong value, value. that re repeatable value. Trust me, you are not going to have customers. You are not going to generate revenue if you are not accountable to your investors and meet up with the expectations of your investors. Your business is just going to die if you don't treat your employees well, or even pay them, or communicate, or share the vision with them in a way. Even if there are challenges, you know. Let your mm. employees be a part of that so that they can share in your pain while solving the problem. You are gonna mm. run into type of ditch if you don't, you know, if you don't adhere to regulatory policies and all of that as a business. So you said it's about creating value and also serving people. So if you are able to pick on those two without omission, you can be sure that your business will be successful. Absolutely. I totally agree. Team coordination, team motivation, and employee retention. It's very important for the startups. And investors' relationship with the founder, because investor is linked with the founder. Employees is linked with the founder. So, and customers, stakeholders linked with the founders. So, founders is having much more responsibility in the first three to five years because they need to make the processes smooth, for the investor, for the employee, for these customers, and each team team member take the responsibility. But again, all things goes to the founder's hat. So it's very important that founders should have some mentorship because we are person, we can make some mistakes, but founder's mistakes, if happens, it happens to the company and company is having a mistake. It's meant it's, it's all back to the all people who are linked with the company, either the employee, the investor, the customers. So it's really very hectic sometimes to be a founder, but it's really a very uh, best journey, I think, so it believe. So uh, I really totally agree with your advice, uh, David, and I, it's last 16 years, I have learned a lot. And same thing I learned today as well, that whatever you are saying is definitely 100% true, and I agree. Um, Let's uh, talk about like, something citing the strategic partnership between first founder and Oak Business Consultant. So what do you think we can be the first uh, strategic partners? How we can collaborate to each other? Just, David. Okay, so uh, for us, I think our strategic, strategic partnership can stem around providing CFO services to our community of startups. Um, getting to engage them on pitch deck development, financial model development, all of this. And also for the fact that we can collaborate on, you know, um, introducing startups within both communities to investors, you know, after mm -hmm. review of their pitch decks and all of that. And um, I believe that it can continue to evolve into some more bigger stuff as, as much as we can see the need and where we think that we can, we can provide what I call shared value why not we'll be able to we'll partner on those sort of level at the end of the day it's more about adding value trying to expand the cost of entrepreneurship and more importantly democratizing entrepreneurship across borders absolutely so for our listener who are due to the world of finance and business a strategic partnership is a formal alliances where two business collaborate to achieve common goals leveraging each other's strengths for mutual growth I totally agree, David. We can be have a good strategic partnership in future. And I will share a, a few startups as well with you. So you can just go through it. And I'm happy to have a, a common grounds to work together, David. Thank you. David, can you share mm -hmm. more about your um, um, benefits 
manifesting in your partnership with Oak Business Consultant, what benefits do you think we can manifest each other for each other? I mean, the benefit will be the outcomes. The outcomes will be that at mm. the end of the day, we are able to serve more startups by offering them affordable services, mm. right? And uh, also linking them up with um, opportunities within the funding space. So as a startup that aligns with us on this partnership, mm. we'll be able to benefit those opportunities where mm. they can have access to professional services offered at a, a, a very good price. And um, also, we'll be able to have access to our pool of our VC network where they can raise their funds and also mm -hmm. have access to the opportunities that can also further um, uh, enable the growth of your businesses. Perfect. So outside of your professional life, what are some of your hobbies or activities that you enjoy and how do you balance your personal and professional life? <laughs> I love to skydive a lot. Um, for every country I travel to, I love to skydive. That is my number one sport. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and of course, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to try my hands on golf now. You know, but then um, I read a lot. I love to read a lot of books. Um, just be able to discover new information, new ideas. In terms of work life balance, yeah. Um. I am busy, but um, I have specific periods that I spend with my family, especially my children. I love my children a lot, and um, I try to connect with them, help them to understand the power of freedom as a human being, understanding the power of character as a human being, and then also helping them to dream. Because I believe very strongly that um, as a father, in bonding with your children, you need to be able to teach them the free will to live life, mm. you know, and then to develop the character that will allow mm. them to cohabit with people. But most importantly, the ability to dream, because when you're able to dream, there are no boundaries to who you can become in life. So those are ways that, I mean, of course, in my playtime, in my serious times with them, I let them, you know, see this, not just only see it, but even to leave it, because they can see that their dad is, uh, is like that too. Absolutely. And being a mother, I have three kids. And from yeah. from stretch, when I have a baby in my hand, I started to mm. dream that they will grow. So what I think that what they will do, they will have a decision making, they will have the, their own ability to think. So, because mm -hmm. sometimes you have a right decision, sometimes you have a wrong decision, but you need to take the responsibility. Okay. Exactly. So it's exactly. exactly. And you need to dream. It's not just a big or small, it's just a dream. So whatever you think, okay. it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. You just need to think properly, have ethics, mm -hmm. honesty, mm -hmm. loyalty with your work, with your family, and with yourself mm -hmm. as well. This is the best thing mm -hmm. you need to teach your kids. Because if mm -hmm. this is the if one kid is is having ethical and as as a natural human being, we are basically making one kid as a one generation. So it means mm -hmm. that I'm teaching one kid, I'm generating the one whole generation. So now three kids, it means three generations. Because if one person is a human being, natural human being, they will uh, they will teach other people as well very well and be the mm -hmm. leader rather than to follow the things. So yes, uh, with the three kids, and every kid is very different, David, believe me, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I have no idea before 11 years ago, but it's now every kid is having their own <laughs> dreams, their own personality. You need to take care of them at every time and, and together. This is a very challenging. <laughs> I can imagine, honestly, but you know, sometimes the way you are actually that, you just have to be able to find, you know, your own way around how things work for you. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I, I always tell people that if you have the capacity and the psychology to keep a kid, do one. Mm -hmm. If you can do two, two, if you can do 10, why not? As long as you have the capacity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, seriously, your kids are um such a blessed because you have a very great father and you have a very visionary. This is a very good thing, David. I really appreciate you. 
And thank you so much, Perfect. David, for your sharing your insights, your experience with us today. It's been a pleasure having you on this now. To our listeners, stay tuned for more episode where we bring your story and strategy from the worst of entrepreneurs and business leaders. Until next time, keep innovating and stay inspired and blessed. Thank you.